Hey folks, Travis back here at the homestead. Had an idea today. Um, actually, this is something that's um, always thinking about when talking on the lines of prepping, especially on a homestead, prepping for the future, regardless of what you're kind of prepping for. And this is something that I include in my plan uh, that we do here on on the homestead, having kids and living out in the sticks. And I wanted to talk to you guys about that, so this is kind of a prepperish video. Um, and I suspect that this will probably connect more with those faces getting all bleached out by the sun. The sun's coming up. It's going to actually be kind of warm today. I suspect that this will probably connect more with um, those of you that have kids and those of you that uh, live out in the sticks. Uh, not saying that if you don't have kids or if you uh, don't live out in the sticks, you, this is a, doesn't apply to you. I think it does. I just think that it'll be more profound. Um, I also suspect that this may connect with women, with mothers, more. And I'll get to that later of why I think that. And thirdly, I don't want you to think that this is something that is high, high priority. There are basics that you need to take care of first when you're kind of preparing, whether it's a, you know, bad weather, outages, grid down, or the poo-poo hits the fan and life as we know it ceases to exist. Um, regardless of that, I think that this is something important. And it's basically, it's prepping for normalcy. Uh, what do you do prepping for just a normal life? Because uh, especially those men out there, like myself, that's, you know, kind of leading the way in the family on, on getting the preparing done, and rightfully so, uh, food, water, uh, shelter, medical, self-defense, home defense, those types of things, bugging out, bugging in, uh, different packs, all those are highly important. And, you know, building up food supplies and stuff, gardening, uh, those are very important and you should always, always do them. But uh, what do you do when things are normal? And what I, what I mean by that is, is that, um, again, this is more long-term uh, situation, uh, not so much um, if you experience a hurricane, you know, tornado, uh, big ice storm, flooding, things like that, that, you know, may last a few days or a week or two or even a situation that you know might clear up after a month or two or three this is more long-term or permanent preparedness idea and eventually uh, regardless of what you go through eventually things are going to kind of normalize to a certain extent you know, I'm not saying it will ever be like it was but things will kind of uh, calm down you know you will uh, get through the initial shock and panic and fear of it. You will kind of get a pattern going on, you know, security and food and where you're going to get it and your water. Because if you've, you know, if this is something major and you've existed three months, let's say, into it, I'm going to find the right spot where the sun isn't bleaching me and the trees aren't shadowing me. Um, if you have um, existed you know, if you, you've survived, you and your family have made it three months in, uh, then, you know, you've kind of got figured out what you're doing. And so what do you do from there? Because things will become somewhat normal. There will be downtime. There will be your just mundane day-to-day -day life. And that's actually a good thing because we as humans, we cannot handle that level of heightency, you know, heightened awareness and, and survivalist mentality and all that all the time. We have to have downtime. We have to have a, a you know, a, a time when it's, it is just kind of normal. And then that goes even for the most trained, prepared, uh, you know, adult, especially someone that, you know, like Pastor Joe that's, you know, ex-Special Forces and all this, I, you know, you need that. And then it's even more true for children. Children can't live in this heightened state of fear and panic and, you know, preparedness, survivalist all the time. They have to have some normalcy. And so what do you do to, to prepare for that? Because things will be different. 
uh, there's not going to be TV possibly. You know, even if you have, even if you're off grid, uh, if it's the right type of EMP and you aren't prepared for it, you may not have electricity. Um, you're you're not going to have uh, places to go for your children to go have fun, to go do things. Um, you know, internet, th things like that. That modern children today, no matter how you know, unless you're living like the Amish, but I would say even most of your um, modern prepperish type minded people uh, they still have some modern things that they do you know music uh, internet TV uh, going places going shopping getting out of the house having some you know time away from each other here and there uh, so you get a break uh, then in the evenings you know there's things to do you need to prepare for that um, I was watching another YouTube channel this morning squid and bear good one uh, go over there and check it out and he was talking him and his wife were talking about uh, your uh, preparedness library and it shouldn't just be you know how to how, as he said I think I think uh, he said you know doing field surgery with a dull K bar it shouldn't just be that type of stuff of course those types of books are very important uh, but it should also be other things um, just books to read you know in the evenings you're sitting around with your kids and I'm sure most of you already have these things if you have kids but you know keep those things in mind when you're buying stuff uh, or stocking up or preparing you know what what are you gonna do let's say it's the evening and you're just kinda kinda down time and getting ready for bed and sitting around and reading you, you you're gonna get bored out of your mind and and start climbing the walls and the kids have nothing to do and they're going crazy and 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 maybe some of you guys out there don't quite get this or don't think it's that important but um, maybe you should talk to your wives because they'll tell you it is, I assure you. Uh, you may be fortunate enough that uh, you get to be away from the kids more. Maybe not, but uh, typical, I know I'm generalizing greatly, but the typical family, you know, the wife stays home or is at least home more with the children and the man gets to go off and do his job and manly things and he gets a break away from it all. Um, give you an example. Maybe a lot of you have experienced this. Uh, let's say you've been snowed in, you know, either you've experienced a snowstorm or an ice storm or flooding or some type of disaster like that, and it may have only lasted three or four days that you're inside, but you're pretty much stuck inside. Uh, maybe you were fortunate enough to go to work, uh, so talk to your wife about this, and ladies, if you're listening, you can speak up. Please do. Um, <laughs> what's it like after three or four days being shut in the house with maybe the power off, with your children. Hmm? I have four at home, so I can tell you what it's like. It drives you crazy. Uh, even you know if the the weather's bad and it's raining and you know nasty. It was that way. It was last week. Uh, we went, had a couple of days of it, it wasn't bad storms or anything, and power didn't go out. You know, of course we had power here and everything, but it was just nasty, cold, rainy, drizzly. So the kids weren't going outside that much. They were just kind of shut in the house. And I'm telling you, we were me and my wife. We were ready to pack their bags and kick them out because it was driving us nuts. And so, what do you do for those types of things? Um, you need to prepare for that because two or three months in and you have the, your food nailed down and you have your water nailed down and your security lit nailed down you got your patrol going on whatever it is but your wife and your kids are going crazy and they can't handle it because they're bored out of their mind because what in the world are they supposed to do now um, you know they've they've read all the five books that they have because you know the, all their other books may have been ebooks uh, all their games was on a laptop or a tablet or, you know, sitting in front of a TV and none of that works anymore. So what are they going to do? They're, they're, they're crawling the walls and they're driving everyone crazy and you're going crazy and all this kind of stuff. So that's one aspect to consider of it. You need to kind of prepare for normalcy also. Um, do you have a library that has enough books that you can read because you may not have any way to produce electricity? And so you gotta go back to that old-fashioned thing of reading those paper books. I know, it's, it's horrible, isn't it? Um, board games, arts and crafts, things like that. I suspect a lot of you people, especially if you already live out in the boonies like we do, you probably already have a lot of that stuff on hand with kids. Um, but, 
uh, you need to think about that. Do you have, you know, is it is it all squared away? Do you have enough? Do you, you should you have a, you know, a big tote, one of those totes you get at the, you know, Walmart or whatever, uh, full of just kind of arts and crafts stuff that you can pull out uh, if something like that happens, board games, um, you know, things like that. And then there's one other aspect, and I know this may be taking it even further, but hey, you know, if you if you're doing this long-term prepping. Um, in your mind you need to consider this what if it's such a long-term down situation or it's such it's such catastrophic situation that even though maybe society kind of starts again it's either long-term or it's so different um, maybe you have small children maybe you have a small have a child during a situation like that uh, how are you gonna raise it do you have you know they may if you're fortunate enough to live in a community which you should you should have your own little tribe that you're in to help you raise that child, but maybe you don't. Uh, do you have adequate things to teach them? Uh, you want them, you know, to grow up and and not just have the knowledge of how to garden, garden and uh, hunt and stuff. Which those are absolutely good things. You should be teaching your children that, anyways. But you also want them to read and write because, uh, you, you know. The society, while it may not come back in your lifetime, it very well could come back in their lifetime. And you want to give them the best advantage possible to make it in that society. So you want to teach them about history. You want to teach them about our history. Let's say, you know, it's a, a catastrophic event that just, you know, knocks us back to the Bronze stage, Bronze Age, and you have a child a year into that and you're raising that child, you want them to know, at least I do, um, what life was like beforehand that led up to this so that they have an idea. So as they become an adult, they can say, hey, you know, my father, grandfather, my ancestors did this, and that's what led to this catastrophic event um, that, you know, or they did these things and, and they weren't prepared enough so that they have the knowledge to create a better future uh, for those that come after you. And so you'll need to do that by having the right kind of books and materials around the house um, to teach them those things. Uh, so, you know, basically it's, I know this may seem very low priority, and I guess it is a lower priority, but I would suggest, if you're just starting off new with getting your family you know, stocked up, stored up, prepared, whether it's your homesteaders, preppers, whatever term you want to use, neo-pioneers. Um, and it really doesn't matter if you're just the kind of mindset that, well, we just want to get ready and, and prepare for, you know, some kind of natural disaster, snowstorm, tornado, hurricane, whatever it is. Or maybe you're the mindset that preps for long term, some type of, you know, poo-poo hit the fan situation. Either way, um, after a while, after you're kind of getting things going with your getting prepared and, and, and stocking up and filling your storehouses full of grain, uh, you, at some point you need to start thinking about these things. Okay, well, I, you know, I've got three, six months supply built up. You know, we need to start kind of also including in our focus. Um, what do we do when it's just downtime? You know, we've been in a poo-poo hit the fan situation six months for a year and you know now we're shut in because it's bad weather and we're stay we're shut in the house for three or four days what the heck do we do you know I know you know I am fortunate enough um, to to be at home I know a lot of you you dads aren't uh, you have to go off and work and I did that for years but you know we've gotten to recently uh, I've been able to be that kind of person Let's try to still get that sun out of my shadows off me. Um, been fortunate enough that, you know, recently in the last couple of years that I'm able to be a stay-at-home person also with mom. So we're here together all the time. And, <laughs> you know, we have a lot of the same interests. We both are into preparing and homesteading and living self-sufficient and, you know, working the land and, and the woods and outdoorsy and all that kind of stuff. So it's not like we, we don't see eye to eye or get along on those things. We do. We absolutely do. But I'll tell you the truth, man, there are days that, you know, we just get on each other's nerves because we're around each other all the time. 
uh, and the kids are here and maybe they're just driving us nuts and we take it out on each other that, that's just normal and you let me tell you if you live like that and you can and you say that that doesn't happen to you guys I don't think I believe you uh, and hey awesome to you if that's what's happening but I'd say most normal people I think a lot of it, it's, it's why, you know, intentional communities have such a hard time have functioning and stuff is because we're, as modern people, you know, Westerners, you know, we're not used to being around the same people all the time. We go off to work, around these people, we go to church, we're around these people, we go, you know, to some fun thing after work, you know, we're around those people, we come home, so we get breaks from each other. Whereas, you know, once upon a time, not actually that far in the past, people were around, you know, families were around each other pretty much 24-7. You know, maybe dad was out plowing the field, you know, mom was out in the garden or whatever, but they were around each other all the time. So they, I think they could handle it more. Modern people, you know, we don't as well. So you got to kind of plan for those things because... I'll be flat out honest with you, and I know my wife, she was standing here, she did say the same thing, because we laugh about this. Um, there are days that I just want to choke her to her eyeballs pop out, and I know she does the same way to me. It doesn't mean I hate her, or she hates me, or we don't like each other, you know, maybe it's, we're mad at each other, or maybe we're just frustrated with the kids and we take it out on each other. The point is, is that's what happens when you're just, you're kind of shut in, and we're not, but, you know, when you're just around each other all the time so you need to kind of prepare for that along with your contingency plan is okay you know the biggest part of the initial emergency is over we're set in we're doing good we're you know we have a a good you know survival uh outlook so now things are kind of normal well, well what in the heck do we do now how do we survive each other you know we we survived the bad guys we survived you know, starvation and water and nature and all this, but now how are we going to survive each other? Something to think about. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Sorry, video turned out longer than I thought. Kind of drug on. Anyways, uh, catch you guys back later. Uh, Buckhart Mountain Homestead. This is Travis. See you later.